Well, I don't know what to tell you. This is what my friend Valerie calls a turntable pine cone. And I'd never heard of that before. Turntable pine cone. And she didn't say why called that. It's a pine cone that hasn't opened yet. So it's it's quite solid. There's no little leaves or whatever you might call them on a pine cone that, to move around or anything. It's, it's quite solid. It, it feels relatively heavy. And so I thought, okay, well, she sent it to me. I should turn it. What can I do with it? And I thought, well, I'll, I'll mount it up on here and I'll turn a opening in the top for a candle holder. Well, then you, then you do away with the point. And, and to me, that kind of ruins the look of the piece. So I put it back and then I took it out again and then I put it back and I took it out again. I can't bring myself to turn it. And I looked for videos on people, other people that have turned turntable pine cones and I couldn't find anything. All I could find was people turning pine cones with the aid of epoxy or something like that. And I couldn't find anybody that had turned one I just can't bring myself to turn it and wipe out all that prettiness it's it's pretty it's very nice and I like I say it has some heft to it and I like that so I'm not gonna turn it <laughs> so then I thought well what am I gonna do with it because it's pretty cool it needs to be shown I thought okay I'll just turn a holder for it and and it'll just sit on a table like that in this holder and there we go well that's not much of a wood turning video to do that but still, that's the best use of this, in my opinion. So, this will be the tools of the trade in today's video. And this will be the bottom for that pine cone. This is something that's just been laying around the shop here for a long time. I don't know what I did with it. Uh, it's it, This is set to accept my larger chuck jaws. And this is set to accept my smaller chuck jaws. So I was doing something, switching back and forth, I don't know. So what I'm going to do, take off my small one and put on my large one. And I'm going to open this up in the top so that this will fit in here. Like that, inside there. And then I'm going to do just the smallest amount of shaping around this edge above this line of bark. I'm going to keep that line of bark. So I, I don't know what kind of shape I'm going to do, but I'm just going to keep that one line right there. Probably taper this towards this center. I need to open up this center. And then once that's done, then I'm going to put my small chuck jaws back on and open them up into this and fix the bottom. Do a little bit of turning on the bottom, not much. And yeah, it's got that big old crack in there. I don't think it's going to hurt us any. I kind of like it, if you can imagine, once it's all said and done, to have that crack in there. So that's all the turning I'm going to do is this thing. And I don't know what kind of finish I'm going to use. I am going to use a half inch bowl gouge instead of a 5 8 And that's about all I know. So let me switch out my jaws. I'll get it mounted up on this end. And we'll get to turning this little pine cone holder. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. As we like to say here at Shady Acres Wood Shop. Howdy, let's get to it. Now I did wonder and consider drilling this out from the bottom so that the outside is all untouched. Touched. And then see how each of these points is kind of lighter color. I wondered if I drilled that out far enough, big enough inside there, and then put a light up in the bottom if, if those points would light up. Now that would be cool. Look like a Christmas tree. So I'm scared to do that. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna make the holder for it. You can see I've drawn a line. That's where I want to start, and I'll just fit this up in there until it feels like it's gonna hold it. Okay. That's about a two and a half inch diameter there. We're going to be turning at 2000 RPM, half inch bowl gouge, mask and face shield on, even for this little guy. Hope that crack holds. That's probably not deep enough. Nope. It's 
hard to know if it was sitting in there, if it would stay there. I think I got to go a little bit deep. I think that'll do it. I won't really know until I stand it up, but I think that'll do it. So now, that's about all we got to do in there. Got to do some kind of minimal shaping over here. And I don't really have a clue what. pretty thin. I do have a good line around this bark and that's what I wanted but well yeah I guess that's okay that's just the way it is isn't it. I guess that's kind of what I had in mind. Time for sanding. There was something I forgot to do and I'd already had the camera off. I just put a little dovetail on the inside of this because when I turn this around my smaller jaws are going to be expanding into that and they have a dovetail on the outside of them so I put a dovetail in there. I'm going to start the sanding with my Sandoflex. I'm going to sand the bark here. This is 180 grit and that's as fine as I'll go and I can probably do that while it's spinning. When I'm done with that I'm going to start uh, with my... I've got these little extra sanding discs that are too worn out from, from power sanding but they'll be okay for something like this. I'll just I'll just hold them up here and sand this inside and out with those. And I'll show you what all that looks like as soon as I get my mask on. Yeah, that smooths it right up, cleans it up, and makes it ready for a finish. And that part's done. We'll start at about 120. Forward though. Easy peasy. I'll bring it back here in a bit and we'll put some kind of finish on there. I don't know what. See you in a bit. I decided to go with the feed and wax on this one because I'm going to use my uh, Sandoflex on the pine cone and then I'm going to put feed and wax on the pine cone and it's going to look nice. Now feed and wax is an excellent product and I'm not, I don't get paid anything to tell you that, I'm just telling you. I really really like it but it does not give you a shine. It might look shiny now while it's wet, but it it won't be shiny later. It, gi it gives it kind of a glow, I, I would say that, but it's just not shiny. But it makes the piece feel so incredible. And you're wondering, well, how are you going to put that on the bark, and then how are you going to buff it out of the bark? Well, I'm going to show you. I'm going to put it on this toothbrush. And then to buff it, I'm going to use a different clean toothbrush to buff it out of here after I blow compressed air on it to blow all this stuff out of the bark. But that's going to make the bark look pretty nice. And feel nice. It just has to set on here for about 20 minutes or so. Then I'll spin the piece up about 800 RPM, something like that. Hold the clean rag against this part and buff it up real good and then I'll hold the clean toothbrush against the bark and buff it up real good. That's what it'll look like except not quite as shiny. I will do that buffing up. We'll turn it around and start working on the bottom. It's going to be cool with once that pine cone's in there. Yeah, you're going to like it. You'll see. See you in a bit.
I'll turn the piece around and have the chuck jaws expanded into the top of this piece. And as we know, there's a big crack here and it goes all the way, it goes to the center uh, on the top side as well. There's quite a bit of wood over here that's holding it together, but I put this band clamp on there just in case because of course I'm spreading out, I'm spreading that crack out and as I put it on the jaws I could see it spread even further. I, I was very careful, I didn't allow it to spread much. But anyway, I put that band clamp on there. It's a little bit scary, so I'm going to wear a glove just in case it wants to come off of there and cut my hand. And of course I'll be wearing my mask and a face shield. We're going to be turning at 1400 RPM with a half inch bowl gouge. I'm just making this concave so it'll just sit on this outside edge, sit nice and flat on a table or wherever it's going to be. And that is the bottom. It's done. Now I need to do something over here on the side. I don't know quite what exactly. There's really not enough there to do anything with. I just need to clean it up I guess. Maybe round over this edge a little bit and that's about all there is. I just have to stay away from this clamp. It comes the closest right here. It's pretty well away the rest of the way. It's just the way the bark is shaped is why it's like that. Okay, I'm just going to leave it like that. So, time for sanding. My wife gave me some emery boards a few years ago. And I think I ran into them about six months ago, but I have no idea where. I can't find them. They'd be perfect for this. But I'll get it done. I already did the upper half and it's pretty good. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sand like I did before. Just like that. So I'll bring you back here in a bit. We'll put some finish on there. I don't need that band on here now because I'm I'm barely expanded into the into the recess on the top. So I, I feel confident we're not turning fast and we're not applying any pressure or anything. So I think it'll be okay. That's what I'll be doing. I'll bring you back here in a bit and we'll put some finish on there. See you in a bit. Feed and wax, same as before. And I'll just put a little on my toothbrush. Not the toothbrush I use every day. This is a special one. And I already put it on the bark, but that band clamp kind of messed it up a little bit, so I'm just cleaning it up. Okay, that's all there is to it. I'll let that set up for a bit, buff it up. Next time you see me, we'll be working on the pine cone. That'll be in about a half an hour. See you in a bit. Now I've mounted my Sandoflex up into a chuck that's held in my chuck. And I'm just, this is 240 grit. 
and I'm just gonna sand this lightly. I'm not sure what I'm looking for. I don't know what I'll get. I don't know if it'll shine a little bit. Some of these points are a little bit sharp and just in case some little kid picks this up, I didn't want to hurt him. It won't change how it looks or anything as far as being a pine cone, but it'll make it a little bit easier to handle maybe. It is kind of putting a little tiny bit of a shine on there. I suppose it's dirty from being in the forest. Yeah, it already feels better. It feels way better. Oh yeah. You know, that's that's so much nicer. So much nicer. It probably doesn't look a lot different. I don't know if the light's picking it up. It, to me, it looks a tiny bit shinier. Not much. But it feels so much better. Absolutely. That was a good choice. Now I'm wondering if I even need to put any kind of finish on it. I kind of think not. Yeah, I don't think so. No. No, it, 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 just, it just feels really good. <laughs> kind of tickles my palms here. Okay. Be sure you stick around to the end of the video so you can see this all together on the turntable. If you'd share the video, I'd really appreciate that. Although it's such a small project, probably nobody will watch. But it was, it was fun to do and actually useful. And that's unusual all by itself. Here it is, one little... I don't know what, I don't know what this wood is. But anyway one pine cone holder in the books. I love that crack. That might be my favorite part. And I really like the bark and the color of the wood. Kind of, I don't know, reddish, purplish. It was quick and easy, no doubt about that. Not much turning, but it serves the purpose. And then this pine cone, I just love that. I wish you could feel it. I wish you could hold it in your hands. It's, like I say, it's kind of weighty for, for what it is. I don't know. I, I should have weighed it. Uh, I doubt if it's a pound, but it's, it's probably 10, 12 ounces. And now that I've sanded it a little bit with the Sandal Flex, it just feels so good. I just think putting a finish on there would be the wrong way to go. It's just so natural and smooth. If it gets dusty sitting around, it'll just blow off really easily with my air compressor. I did take it over to my sanding disc and just flattened off this bottom a little bit to uh, make it a little less pokey. It was kind of pokey with the, I guess that might be called the stem of it, I don't know. But I only took off about an eighth of an inch or so. But it's really nice. And I'll show it to you on the turntable here in just a minute. Hope you enjoyed the video. It was a lot of fun to do. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, thumbs up, please. I'd sure appreciate it. If you're a subscriber, thank you very kindly. I truly appreciate that. If you're not a subscriber, you might consider becoming one. I put out regular videos about one a week, and I'd like to keep in touch. An easy way to subscribe is just click my picture you see there near the end of the video. Your comments are always welcome, and I love reading them. So for now, this is Phil, Shady Acres Woodshop. Signing off.